Hello and welcome to Rathod's IS. Today in this session, we are going to see current affairs of 20th January 2024. So we are going to take PDF of Hindu and we are going to select the articles which are important from our examination point of view. And many of you are beginners, right? So you might not knowing like which article is important from our examination point of view. So to identify the articles and to select the articles, there is a tip that is you have to go through your syllabus copy. So if you have idea of your syllabus, then you can easily pick up the articles from newspaper which are relevant from our examination point of view. So you will be seeing the keywords in your syllabus. So sometimes you can see the same keywords that will be appearing in the paper. So that in this way you can pick up the articles. And if you have the knowledge about the syllabus, then you can easily interconnect with one subject with another subject. And you will be getting lots and lots of dimensions and as well as perspectives. So here, not only reading each and every word is important, but even you have to think in different dimensions. So that multi-dimensional approach will be helpful for your mains. And mains is the ball game. So it is not about your prelims or interview. Here you have to focus on means and if you have good analytical skills and good writing skills then you can clear this UPSC for sure. So whenever you are starting your preparation so focus on this means answer writing. Okay you can start with static. So this is the front page of Hindu and we are going to pick out the articles. So there is an article which is important from our first page or front page. That is, reforms led to India's success in sports, which is the statement given by our Prime Minister. So, our Prime Minister, he cited like various reforms that have came up by the government of India. And because of that reforms, now we are seeing that India is also excelling in this sports. And even women, they are entering into the sports and uh, we got lots of medals for women. For example, Mary Kom, PV Sindhu, like that. So here in this context, you have to see like what is the scale of India youth game. So our Prime Minister, he gave the statement inauguration of 6th Kalo India youth games, right? So from this article point of view, how can you think? Okay, so how many dimensions that you have to think? Let us see. So this article is talking about sports and India. So it is talking about sports and India. So now this article is important from your GS paper to under governance point of view. So under this governance you can see about what are the reforms came up by government and you can see one important scheme that is Kalo India. Okay, so these are the two things that you have to see from this governance point of view. And now let us see the dimensions. You have to see like some facts of sports. And you have to see what are the reforms. And you have to see sports governance in India. have to see how the sports governance in India is and also like what are the challenges and even way forward. Okay, so these are the things that you have to see about and from GS paper to under polity, so you have to see different organizations. For example, for cricket, we have BCCI. Like that, you have to see the different organization for different sports. That comes under your polity point of view. And even in GS paper 3 under economy, you can see like how much amount of budget is spending in the sports. So what is the contribution from our GDP? That is very important. And how sports is contributing to our economy? That point of view also you can think 
and even in this sports we have para olympics that is for disabled people so here you have to see that point of view as well okay so all these are important dimensions from this article point of view so you have to think in all these things and now let us move on to next page so in city page i found nothing so one thing you have to keep always in your mind is so there will be not more than seven to article hardly not more than eight articles in the newspaper that's it it's so not more than eight which is important from your upsc point of view so don't spend more than two hours of time in reading each and every article and reading in each and every word so i saw like most of the students they are making this uh, mistake like they will be reading each and every word and they will be writing each and every word so writing each and every word is not important okay so only which is relevant so we have to see that itself so i will make you understand like which is relevant and which is not relevant and how to read newspaper clear and one more thing here is if you are watching this rathod's is news analysis please do watch consistently so that i can promise you like within 5 to 6 months of time you will understand the syllabus and actually you will be connecting the in subjects and i will be giving you the dimensions okay so please have a faith on me or please believe me so that you can develop your skills and now let us move on to the state speech yes here you can see one article that is andhra becomes second state to take up caste census yes now it has becoming a trend so what is a trend trend is caste census so this article is important from your gs paper 2 under polity and even governance point of view it is important and from gs1 it is important from society so if you say dimensions you have to see from gs paper 1 and so gs paper 2 under polity so we have this caste based discrimination we have caste based discrimination so for this we have fundamental rights which are present in the part 3 of indian constitution so these fundamental rights are guaranteed rights so if your fundamental rights are violated you can directly approach the court to using writs and from governance point of view here you can use the data which is obtained from this caste based census for policy making okay for policy making coming up of uh, schemes or increasing of reservation in education in reser in reservation jobs etc so for all that things yes we can use the data and from society perspective you have to see what is the reason for this caste based discrimination and what are the steps taken by government till now and what is the way forward okay and there are some important facts so which is the first state to come up with this caste based census that is bihar and we studied lots and lots of articles regarding caste based census of bihar right so all these things are very important and if you move on here you can see one article that is warmer winter impacts ice hockey one out five kilometers charger trek in country's coldest region of ladakh so this article is also very important so till now we saw dimensions of climate change yes you and me everyone knows that climate change is happening and we are facing experiencing this climate change events so climate change is having impact on our biodiversity on livelihoods 
climate change is having impact on economy of a country it is having impact on health of people so because of this climate change now we are coming up with new laws and new policies they are from polity point of view and we are also coming up with new technology to curb this greenhouse gas emissions and to decrease carbon dioxide or carbon emissions that is from science and technology point of view and from international relations here we are coming up with agreements with the different countries and we are having different conventions and we have recently cop 28 okay like that from international relations point of view okay so from society point of view also we will be having lots and lots of impact and from disaster management point of view so because of climate change we are experiencing events of heat wave Yes or no? We are experiencing the events of heat wave, untimely rainfall, in some areas droughts, in some areas floods, cloud burst, and also forest fires. Yes or no? So how many dimensions we got? We got around. So this is one from environment and ecology. Second one is from society. Third one is from livelihoods. Fourth one is from economy. Fifth one is from health. So you will be getting pandemics here, or emergence of new diseases, or it will also causes pollution related problems. and last here seventh one is technology eighth one is international relations ninth one is disaster management right so these all are the dimensions but now this article will gives you new dimension so climate change impact on sports so the new dimension is climate change is also having impact on sports now what happened because of this climate change because of increasing of global warming so the snowfall had been decreased so because of this snowfall decreasing or decreasing of ice formation that is affecting ice sports for example trekking and as well as ice hockey in which region in ladakh So in this way, you have to interconnect the topics. Is or not getting the points or not? If you are getting the points, hit the like button. That's I'm not asking anything. Just hit the like button. So that will be encouraging me. If you want to say thank you to me, just hit the like button. That's it. Okay. So in this way, you have to interconnect the topics. So you are getting like seven to eight dimensions here. So with these dimensions, you can write a very good essay. So if you are adding data. if you are adding some examples a case studies okay so this is the thing that you have to focus on and now let us move on in this editorial page there is an article it is regarding climate resilience and we have to come up with region specific plans so as you all know that we have imd okay so we have imd indian meteorological department So now it is celebrating this year 150th anniversary. So it is celebrating 150th anniversary. So with this IMD, yes, we got lots of developments. Okay, so IMD, which help for development of our country by early forecasting or early prediction. So it also gives early warning. so because of this to some extent we came up with decreasing of loss but here the issue is the issue is because of this climate change we are facing devastating events
So this IMD is very much working good in regarding cyclones, tsunamis, okay, but it is not well in this rainfall protection. Okay, so here this article is saying that because of climate change, there are some loopholes which is seen in the functioning of IMD. In functioning of IMD, we have some loopholes. Those loopholes need to be rectified. That means we need to come up with a region specific production. So we need to come up with a region specific production. Okay, we need to come up with region specific production. So this is the thing which mainly said. So here, what are the things that you have to focus? So first one is you have to know some important facts regarding this IND. So this is 150th anniversary. So there is a high chance of getting prelims and also mains based question. So in mains you have you will have to prepare like analysis like what is the significance what is the relevance of this imd now so what are the loopholes or what are the challenges you are facing and you can also write some measures so in this dimensions you can get mains question like what is the success what are the failures and what are the advantages of this imd and what are the challenges and you can have to set some measures. So from this point of view, you can get a mains question, okay? So in this way, you have to be prepared. And next topic it is about India science management. So this article is talking about research and development. Okay, so this is talking about research and development so if you are talking about science so we have lots and lots of advancements so we have lots and lots of advancement and we came with lots of improvement in technology So we have improvement in technology. So how this improvement of technology or advancements is contributing to economy? So whenever we are using this advancements and improvement and we are using in our daily life. So whenever we are using in our daily life, then it will lead to the contribution to our economy. For example, nowadays in health sector, we are using advancements in science and technology, like we are using different diagnostic tools. Yes, we know that, yes, in advancements, yes, we had good type of technology, but if you are not using that technology, means how it is contributing to economy. So if you are having a good uh, di diagnostic technology or we have good equipment, which is running due to this technology, for example, we have uh, good uh, technology uh, to go for test to diagnose the districts and uh, to diagnose the diseases and to come up with the final conclusion like which disease that we are having exactly then we can go for giving of drugs okay if we know the technology but if you are not using technology means how it will be lead to the uh, help okay or how it will lead to the public good it will not right so here what are the advancement and what are the technology we have? We have to use them in our daily life so that even that will be contributing to our economy. Okay, so this is the one thing that you have to see. And here you can also focus like what is the spending? Spending of government of India in this R&D. So if we're talking about contributions in this research and development, so we have two sectors. We have public sector and we have private sector. But in India, if you are comparing with other countries like US, so private sector is spending a lot. But that is not in the case of India. In India only, we have majorly contribution from this public sector, but not from the private sector. 
and as you all know that functioning of government it is very late right and even we can see mismanagement of funds so because of this research and development in india is very slow so here you can see like different fields like in nanotechnology robotics computers space technology defense technology so if you see in the defense technology even though we have developed and we have advanced technology we are importing equipment from other countries like russia france us etc so why we are not going for development even the ship industry also is yes no? and even the semiconductors that we are getting from other countries so why we are not manufacturing in india okay so there is a lot of the things that we can harness through this research and development so that is the thing which mainly said and this article is talked about what are the advancements and what are the challenges that you are having okay in our indian science management so these are the things that you have to remember and this topic is important from gs paper 3 under science and technology only and you have to see from mains point of view not from prelims so that's all from this editorial page so today saturday will be getting ground zero yeah actually this article which is corrected to me a lot and i saw personally this type of events okay i don't know whether you have you whether you are aware about this type of uh, things uh, that is like uh, death of infants especially children who are below a 5 years of age so here the incident is rami bai and her husband who lost their 45 days old child in december after a midwife branded him with hot bangles as a cure for pneumonia so this type of practices which is going on super stages will be going on even today in this 21st century in tribal people so because of this superstitions we can see there is increasing of mortality rate in this tribal people so they are not going to hospitals to get the treatment they will be sometimes using the traditional medicine system so if it is fails means they will be using this type of things or superstitions okay so let me know your opinion regarding this whether it is correct or not so for pneumonia so how can we give the treatment by this hot bangles so they will be heating the bangles and they will be keeping that hot bangles on the on the body what happens if you keep the hot bangles on the body the skin will be burning right yeah so recently uh, from last 10 days onwards i have rigorous rigorous efforts because my one of my kid okay that to my girl child so she is suffering from pneumonia viral pneumonia and i know like how she is uh, suffering okay and from last 10 days onwards we are moving to hospital daily and there is no sleep at all so i know how this pneumonia which is uh, causing the sufferings in the children so how they can go for this type of treatment okay so think on this so what is your opinion regarding superstitions which are followed by this tribal people and in this news page you can see one article that is regarding nasa space craft pink chandrayaan 3 lander on the moon so here you have to see the lander name is vikram okay so we have lander that is vikram so nasa space craft has successfully pinged india's chandrayaan 3 lander on the moon and according to the nasa here a laser beam was transmitted and reflected between its lunar recognizance orbiter and vikram lander for the first time on lunar surface and the us space agency said the successful experiment opens door to a new style of precisely locating targets on moon surface so i can say this chandrayaan 3 it is a very success so chandrayaan 3 it is a mission of isro but now nasa is doing this experiment to know exactly the targets on this moon's surface okay so now we have to see some dimensions so this article is important from your gs paper 300 science and technology that of from space technology so this article is talking about chandrayaan 3 This is talking about Chandrayaan three. 
So you have to see about some facts regarding Chandrayaan 1 and Chandrayaan 2. Chandrayaan 2 is a failure, but Chandrayaan 1 and Chandrayaan 3 are success. So you have to see what are the objectives of this Chandrayaan 3. Okay, and you have to see some basic facts like soft landing on this south pole, etc. Okay, and you have to see like because of the success of Chandrayaan 3, India became front runner. India became front runner in new space era. India became front runner in this new space era and now many countries are looking towards India and they want to collaborate with India in this space sector. So from that point of view also you have to think. And if you move on here you can see one word that is Assam's Mazuli. So Rahul Gandhi visits over 350 year old Vaishnavite monastery in Assam Mazuli. So here you have to see some keywords. So you have to see like Mazuli. So Mazuli is nothing but a riverine island. It is a riverine island. That means river it is moving. So in this river we have an island. So in which river we have this riverine island? That is river Brahmaputra. And this Mazuli Island is the second largest riverine island in the world. Okay, and this riverine island Mazuli is very much famous for this Vaishnavite monasteries. Okay, so this is very important prelims fact. And in this page you can see there is one article. It is regarding how do you plan to save great Indian bursted. Supreme Court asks government. And this topic is at most important. Okay, so this article is talking about Great Indian Bustard. So this is talking about Great Indian Bustard. And this topic is important from GS Paper 3 under Environment and Ecology. So what are the things that you have to see here? So the number is decreasing day by day. So what are the reasons? So one important reason here is, so these birds, they are coming in contact with electric wires, electric lanes. So because of this, they are getting shock, electrocution and they are dying. So these birds are heavy birds. And whenever they are flying, if they are coming in contact with the lines, so they cannot come down. They cannot change the direction fast. So this is an important reason they are coming up with collision with this electric lines and that is leading to the decreasing of this number of this great Indian bursted. So what are the dimensions that you have to see? So you have to see what are the causes and you have to see the habitat where they are living and you have to see conservation status. Okay, you have to see conservation status of this great Indian bursted. And not only this, you have to see like what are the measures taken by government. And Supreme Court is constantly asking government like what are the steps that you are going to take to increase this number of this great Indian bursted. So all these things are very, very important. So whenever any animal is seen in use, Yes, that will be very important from your UPSC point of view. Yes, that's it. So these are the very important articles that appear in our today's Hindu newspaper. And one thing I want to say is we are coming up with new batch of mains answering practice. So as you all know that mains is a ball game. Yes, you need to have this answer writing skills. So many students they will be thinking that after once I clear prelims, so I will be starting this mains answer writing. But between prelims and mains, you will be having just three months of time. So in this three months of time, it is impossible to get that skill. Because you have to practice your optional. You have to focus on the revision of your GS. 
so already you will be having the heavy burden of syllabus right so in that short and limited um, period of time you can't go for main translating and it will be like a great challenge for you so listen to my words and believe me so you have to start this main answering practice at least one to one and a half year before your examination and whenever you are starting your preparation start writing something so even though if you don't know anything so you can take the questions of your static syllabus like geography history it will be not changing right so you can take the questions of geography and history and try to write something so even though it is wrong yes you have to start writing then only you will improve so if you are not writing means you can't improve and one more thing is if you are preparing for mains then you can easily clear prelims it is damn sure okay if always your preparation should be both integrated you should not prepare separately for prelims and separately for mains okay i will show you how this course will go on So this is our daily mains answering course, and we are going to start the new batch from twenty twenty second January twenty twenty four. So here we are covering entire your GS syllabus within one year of time, and the questions will be based on both static and as well as current affairs. So GS one and GS four will be static, but GS two and GS three you have the questions from current affairs. And here we are covering your GS paper one, paper two, paper three, and paper four. and not only mains answers but even we are covering your essay and case study so many students they have the fear of writing an essay so how many have the fear please let me know and in our zoom live interaction classes yes we are going to discuss different dimensions of essay so in that way here you can lose your fear that is for sure and many students they got benefit from this course And next one is we are going to provide you the modal answer for each and every question, essay and case study, and we are going to give the detailed evaluation of your answers. So what are the answers that you are writing? Okay, so we are going to evaluate your answers, and we are going to give you the detailed feedback, like what can be written, what you wrote, so how can you improve your presentation, like whether there is any need of map or when whether there is any need of data or any Supreme Court judgment report. so that thing we will be giving you in the detailed feedback and we will be having doubt clearing sessions on zoom and even we have live essay writing and case study sessions also so this course absolutely absolutely beneficial for the beginners who are going to write 2025 and 2026 and even if you want to give this 2024 also yes within 3 months of time you can uh, try at least to improve your skills okay so this is about our course and if you want to join this you can visit our website okay and one more thing is if you want to talk to me directly you can call me on this number 8074765513 okay and let us go back to our notes and one more thing is if you want to get this notes you can join the telegram channel link is given in description box so the first topic it is about reforms in our sports sector yes nowadays upsc is also asking questions from sports yes last year and before last year we have two questions okay so here the context says that prime minister cited various reforms undertaken by central government and also said that it is supporting government is supporting this athletes from past 10 years so because of this things so these are the key reasons for the country's success in international sporting events for example we have tokyo olympics asian games paralympics so paralympics it is for disabled people okay and if you see some details so in inaugurating session of 6 edition of kelo india youth sports So our prime minister he has made this statement because government is working very hard and passionate even before and government started gaining confidence and support from the from the athletes from last ten years. So if you're talking about governance of sports structure in India, yes, we have two important things organization that are dealing with the sports. So first one is Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports. and second one is indian olympic association 
So what is this Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports? So it is a body or body that oversees various institutions. For example, we have Sports Authority of India, which provides infrastructure and even training and financial assistance to athletes and coaches. So that is the work which is done by this Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports. And we have Indian Olympic Association. So it is autonomous body and this body represents in India International Olympic Committee and other international sport federations and even organizes national games, championships, etc. So these are the two important organizational structure or two separate bodies which are managing the sports in India. Okay, so this is very very important from your prelims. And let us see what are the challenges that we are facing in the sports. So recently wrestlers association which is seen in news. Right. So in that way, what are the what are the challenges? So in the sports sector, there is lack of autonomy. Okay, there is lack of autonomy, and as well as there is lack of accountability that is seen in this national sports federations. So in this national sports federation, we have lack of autonomy and lack of accountability. So this is the first important challenge. And this national sports federations, you now the bodies that regulates and they promote different sports in India. And next one here is we have apex body for Olympic sports in India that is Indian Olympic Association. And next one is NFL, NSFs they are supposed to be independent and democratic organization. And this organization they will follow the principles of good governance, transparency, participation, fairness etc. But the problem here is this NSFs they are facing the problem of nepotism and favoritism. And even many a times as political parties, they will be involved in this bureaucratic forces and they will be also involving in the appointment process. And even sometimes this NF, NSFs, they are headed by the same person from the family for decades. For example, grandfather, father, son, grandson like that. So there will be no elections without the term limits. So because of this, there is also the problems like misusing of funds violating the rules and discrimination that is seen and the second important problem is there is lack of coordination the cooperation in the stakeholders okay and next one is there is also lack of clarity and consensus on their roles and responsibilities so because of this that will lead to duplication of efforts and the wastage of resources and conflicts of interest and next important problem is there is no long-term vision and strategy for the sports development in india Okay, and next one here is there is no clear and coherent policy framework for the roadmap to harness potential and to achieve excellence in the sports at all the levels. And there is also lack of adequate investment and innovation sports, infrastructure, technology, research, education and the grassroots development. So there is also lack of an adequ adequate investments. So these are the some, in some problems that you are facing in the sports sector. So how can we uh, suggest some measures? So what can be done? So what is the need? So what is the way forward? So the way forward here is we have to reform these NSFs. So we have to make them more accountable, more transparent. And we have to ensure there are proper regular elections for the members. And there is a need of social audit system and uh, disclosure, grievance, redressal mechanism, etc. And they have to be made more inclusive and representative. And we have to ensure gender parity, regional diversity and stakeholder participation is very important. And we should also make them more professional and as well as competent by uh, acquiring or by hiring the qualified staff. And we have to adopt best practices and we have to even enhance the capacity building. And we have to strengthen the coordination. There should be better coordination and alignment among different agencies and authorities in sports governance in India. And we need to have the proper division of roles and responsibilities among the members. And we need to come up with the hiring of expertise people. Okay, that should be mandate. And there should be regular dialogues and consultation among the people if there are any conflicts so that we can resolve those conflicts as soon as possible. And there should be a greater involvement of private sector as well. Because only the uh, government sector or public sector is involved here. 
So we have to include this private sector so that there will be increasing of competition. And we have to develop a vision. There should be a comprehensive and long term vision strategy for the sports development in India. And this vision should be based on a thorough analysis based on the strength, weakness, opportunities and also threats which are facing Indian sports. And we have to focus on national goals, aspirations of India and we have to transform them into action plans. Okay, and we have to measure the outcomes and indicators. So in this way, we can come up with some measures in our sports sector. I want to give you one means question, try to write answer for this question. That is, how can sports governance be improved? That means it is asking about measures. To ensure fair, transparent decision making process, accountability, stable uh, stakeholder participation. And next question is, what are the main challenges? This is second question. And third one is opportunities for reforming the sports governance structure in the context of globalization, commercialization, digitalization. So try to write answer for this question. Okay, don't forget. And now let us see next next topic. It is about warmer winter impacts ice hockey and one or five kilometers charter trek in countries coldest region that is in Ladakh. So this article, as I said, it is important from your environment and ecology. Okay, environment and ecology. So this topic is related to climate change and is climate change impact on sports. So if you see context, it says that an unusually warm winter this year, which impacted extreme winter sports like ice hockey and also one or five kilometers charter trek in the cold desert mountains of Ladakh. And it is considered as the country's coldest place where the minimum temperature can drop to minus 40 degrees centigrade. So here, yes, the minimum temperature which has been dropped to minus 40 degrees centigrade. So if you see details of this article, it says that the formation of ice surface was not up to the mark. So whenever you are having the cool temperature, ice formation will happen. But if you see, whenever the temperature is rising, the snow will be melting, right? So that here, there is no formation of ice surface as per the mark. So if there is no formation of this uh, ice means, how can we go for ice games? So we can't. Okay, so it will be dangerous to practice and to play ice hockey matches in this less cover of ice. So electric fans, so they are coming up with using of electric fans which help in freezing process. Okay, freezing process of the rink which made playable and safe. So now if you see hockey, hockey requires a temperature of around minus 4 degree centigrade for a favorable playing environment. So Ladakh is only region in India where ice formation, no snow accumulation is a common thing which is seen because of very low temperature in this Ladakh region. And here in the months of November and December, there have been much warmer Okay, when we are comparing with the last year, so that there is deficient snowfall that happened. So even according to meteorological department, Leh has recorded just 1.2 centimeters of snowfall. But here in the last year, at the same time, it was like around 2.6 centimeters. Now it is 1.2 centimeters only. And the highest snowfall is seen around 13.6 centimeters. It was recorded in this region in year 2013. And here if you see one more important place fact is Ladakh is also home to second coldest place in the world. So first is Dras and second one is Ladakh. Right, so this is about this topic and please let me know what are the reasons for this deficient snowfall and what is the impact. So I will be giving you two minutes of time. So please pause the video and please write the comments. So do it fast. So what are the reasons for this? deficit snowfall and what is the impact. So please do it fast. <coughs> Done. Let's come back and let us see the next topic. It is about climate resilience and the role of IMD. So this topic is important from GS paper 1 on geography and as well as GS paper 300 economy. 
sorry under economy and even under gs paper 3 we are also having this environment and ecology so i currently a lot of dimensions here like science and technology disaster management environment and ecology international relations quality right so you have to integrate all these subjects so if you see the context indian meteorological development is imd which is celebrating 150th anniversary this year so at present it analyzes entire spectrum of climate and weather so it will be coming up with forecast from cyclones to fog and was conceived in colonial times to probe mysterious of southwest monsoon so why we came with this imd so imd which came up during this colonial period that is british period okay so the british administration concerned about revenues it was intimately aware of influence of monsoons and because of this monsoon it is it is helpful for the harvest of agriculture produce and the observation of winds rain and sunshine that could also predict the future torrents like droughts or rainfall etc and the analysis of this data by this research at council on energy environment and weather which says that monsoon trends at sub divisional level from 1982 to 2022 so here <clears throat> after the study by the ceew it says that monsoon rainfall is increasing more than half or 55 percentage of india is roughly 4400 thousands and out of this around 11 of 11 percentage of them they are facing this decreasing of rainfall and those thousands about 68 percentage of experienced reduced rainfall in four monsoonal months and there is 87 percentage of uh, decline during this months of june and july which is seen so whenever there is deficit of rainfall it will be affecting the sowings especially kharif sowings so most of these thousands they are in indo gangetic plains so how these plains are formed so indo gangetic plains they are also called as nadran plains so we have himalayas so towards the south of himalayas we have this great plains of india or nadran plains or indo gangetic plains so they are formed because of the sediments which are brought up by this himalayan river system okay so here even in this indo gangetic plains so they are facing this lack of rainfall and even most of the half of india's agriculture production which is mainly affected because of this rainfall <clears throat> and next one is the study also found that about 30 percentage of india's districts witnessed several years of deficient rainfall okay and about 38 percentage many years of excessive rainfall some important regions like uh, gujarat rajasthan central maharashtra and some parts of tamil nadu they are having the dry dry period and even because of this north east monsoon or also called as retreating monsoon so because of this retreating or north east monsoon so the rainfall had been increased which is more than 10 percentage in the past decade and approximately 80 percentage of thousands of tamil nadu 44 percentage in telangana 39 percentage in andhra pradesh respectively so in this region they will be receiving rainfall and the southwest monsoon accounts for nearly 76 percentage of india's annual rainfall about 11 percentage from this north east rainfall or north east monsoon so india's monsoon they are increasingly prone to long dry spells and also punctuated by torrential wet spells so here this article says that because of this climate resilience so we have to improve this climate resilience and for that we need effectively uh, functioning and effective functioning is not only required but even we need funds and resources as well so we have to prioritize a regional and sub district forecast over national ones so it is one of the way forward or the measures can be taken by imd so this is about this topic and now let us move on to next topic it is about india's science management so this article is also very important from your gs paper 3 under science and technology and this topic is especially important from your prelims sorry from your mains so from prelims you will be not getting any question so if you see here this article is focusing on india's science management right the sustained economic progress 
that can satisfy national ambition, it is invariably fueled by scientific advancements. And this scientific advancements or improvements in science and technology that we have to translate it into deployable technologies, the technology that can be used in our daily life. So India's overall expenditure on this research and development is very low. That is around 7% of GDP. Okay, so sorry, that is 0.7% of GDP. But if you are comparing with US, it is 3.5%. That is 5 times more compared to that of India's expenditure. And China's expenditure is 2.4% of GDP. So because of this, we are not getting the scientific outcomes. So when you are considering that such a low expenditure, and it is very much important to allocate money wisely and we have to focus on future impact projects or high impact projects. So in 2022, ISRO, that is Indian Space Research Organization, which stood distant eighth to land, launch numbers and the foreign startup which are racing in the key technologies and we started using these reusable rockets. So likewise in this nuclear energy also, yes we have filtered away. So we are the late comers to small modular reactors and even regarding this thorium based reactors, so we had not started anything. So even it is very much critical for science and technology themes like genomics, robotics, artificial intelligence and this situation is alarming in using of these technologies. So India's science is dominated mainly by public sector, so there is no involvement of this private sector is seen. So because of this, it is one of the great challenge. So here even generic irritants like we have governmental bureaucracy and tardiness that is late in approving of the things and there is no equitable decision, there is no proper funding, okay. So all these things are the main problems that we are facing in the science and technology sector. And added to this here even there is inability to commit long term steady funding of critical projects or scene. So because of this, we can see uh, normally occasional failures in our projects in science and technology. So if you're talking about some challenges in this Indian science, in, uh, science system or science management, the first important challenge here is there is no proper uh, administration of organization. So administration of organization is a very complex process, but we do not have a proper management. Okay, administration requires a particular skill set and as well as more importantly, we need money, resources and time, so we do not invest in that. And as well as there is lack of comprehensive training in selecting which particular metrics are appropriate under what circumstances. And we are not focusing on the training. And as well as there is also conflict of interest that is seen, okay. So because of this conflict of interest between stakeholders, yes, the work is not moving on. So these are some important challenges in our Indian science management. And next topic is about Great Indian Bursted. So this topic is important from your science and technology point of view. So if you see context, it says that the Supreme Court directed the center to come clean by February on its plan, like how it is going to save this Great Indian Bursters. So they are critically endangered. So here if you see some details, so a three judge bench headed by Chief Justice of India said that government has to come out with a plan. So this plan need to save the bird species from extension. So they are extend, they are in the verge of extension that their number is decreasing day by day because they are heavy flying birds. So they are coming in contact with this high transmission power lines and they are colliding and that leads to electrocution or getting electric shock. So these power lines are situated in the areas in Gujarat and Rajasthan. Okay, so where there is a natural habitat of this great investor. So in these regions we have this power lines. So court said the government that you have to come with a plan to maintain a balance between preservation of this bird species or conservation of this bird species and as well as India's global commitments to shed up carbon footprints. So if you're talking about some important facts regarding this great Indian buster, so the state, it is a state bird of Rajasthan and is India's most critically endangered bird now. So regarding the status, already UPSC asked a question, I will be showing you the question at last. And it is considered as a flagship grassland species 
which is representing the health of grassland ecology. And where we can see this great Indian buster, they are confined to Rajasthan and as well as Gujarat. And a very small population seen in Maharashtra, Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh. So what is the vulnerability? The bird is under constant threats because of collision or electrocution. And there is also problem of hunting. So hunting is still prevalent in Pakistan. Habitat loss, alteration because of agricultural expansion etc. So these are some important threats to have mainly faced. And if you see the protection status, so in IUC and Red List, they are declared as or they are written as critically endangered. And under the sites, they comes under Appendix 1. So Appendix 1 uh, animals, they will be getting lots of protection. And even on this Convention on Migratory Species, it is also listed under Appendix 1. And under this Wildlife Protection Act of 1972, it is listed as Schedule 1. So this status is very, very important. And I want to show you a question which appeared in prelims in 2012. So that time it asked about which of the uh, one of the following groups of animals they belongs to category of endangered species. Okay. So now you can see this great Indian bustard is critically endangered. So here also we have critically endangered. Okay. So you have to see this is no leopard is also critically endangered. So like that you can eliminate the things. But in 2012. So the status of irritating or busted was endangered, not critically endangered. Okay, so that thing you have to remember. So these are the very important articles that appeared in our today's Hindu newspaper. And I already said about this main translating course, right? So how can you join this course? I will show the process of joining the course. So you can visit our website. This is Rathor's IS Academy website. So whenever you are visiting to the web website for the first time, you have to click on login to register. And after that, you have to click on do not have account if you have not registered at least once. Okay, so after filling the details, you can register. So after registering, you can use the ID and password and you can click on login. And later on, you can click on this course list. So these are the courses that we are offering in Rathod's IES. So we are not only providing main answer writing, we are also providing the foundational course for UPSC. And if you want to take the single subject coaching, you can take here. So before taking the course, if you want to watch the demo videos, you can click on play course. So the three demo videos will be opened without paying a single penny. So after watching the demo videos only, if you like that, you can go for purchasing of the course. So for purchasing, you can click on this buy now. And the price are very, very low now. Okay. So you can check the prices if you want to go and even you can get the foundation course of this UPSC CSC 2025 and 2026 for just 25,000 rupees with a lifetime mentorship. Okay, don't miss this chance. And here this is our main translating course. So here you can click on buy course so that you can join the course. And this is our telegram channel Rathod's IS classes. So here we are providing the notes, you can join the channel. And this is our YouTube channel, Rathod's IS Academy. So please do subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to subscribe. Okay, so that's all for today. So if you really, really like the class, so if you really like the class, if you got the dimensions, or if you got the new points, at least 10 new points from this class, please hit the like button. And please do share this video to your friends also. And don't forget to subscribe to this Rathor's IS Academy. Thank you so much for watching.